I am wrestling, do not weep for me. Celebrate what I am. Celebrate what I have been. Celebrate what I represent. And celebrate the many ways I have impacted your life. I will survive this test as I have survived others. I am forever etched into the very fiber of all mankind. The world needs me. Time is on my side. History guarantees me. I am wrestling. Do not wait for me. What's up, everybody? This is episode 50. Yes, we did make it to 50 of the T-Row and Funky Show. Brought to you, as always, by Defense Soap. And now also brought to you by Dahmer. Tommy actually called up Guy, Guy Seco today. And... Um, was telling that a lot of our kids, he, he's sponsoring our AWA Winter Classic again. I was telling that a lot of our kids use the Defense Soap wipes. And I, I think that's the product to push at those type of tournaments because uh, it's something that you can take anywhere and it's really easy to clean off after matches. So I make sense. Makes sense. I got a little guy in the wrestling. And, um, you know, when, when I when I take a six year old, I, I take him to practice on usually because we don't. You know, it's not like a college practice where your shirt's so ringing wet. You have to shower. Yeah, of course. And he's like half sweaty, and we usually have to go to some other place, go to meet our family or something. And I got to get those wipes for sure. It'll be good at tournaments too. Wait, Tommy, you don't shower him after practices? I do. Oh, you're just asking for this guy, little dude to get all kinds of funk. I do, but I'm saying every now and again we got to go somewhere else. I mean, I think ringworm's good for you, so... You're not a big deal in my eyes, but your, your it builds wife up, might be upset. it builds up immunity. That's for sure. I think it makes you stronger. It definitely more mentally tough. <laughs> that that works out perfect for Can me. Can you believe we made it to fifty episodes, man? Yeah, you know, I didn't. I didn't know. I remember we were on the phone on my porch. Like, it seems like just yesterday, and you said I want to do a podcast. I said, Well, I want to do a podcast, and then it was like Step Brothers said, Well, I guess we got a podcast. <laughs> Hey, did we just become I, best friends? I just, I just walked down to my basement. I told my wife, I said, I'm going down to do the podcast. She's like, okay. I said, this is episode 50, and you still haven't listened to one. She still hasn't listened. My wife hasn't listened to one either, though. She goes, I'm gonna try to make it to 100 without listening. <laughs> like, what are you doing? So Jeez, we got thousands of fans, and we can't get our wives to listen. Wow, they just don't love wrestling that much. Um, so we got Lou Roselli on tonight. He should be calling in any minute now. I know Lou. I know. So you you have some insight. Give give us some insight on Lou before he comes on. Lou Roselli is a uh, mastermind of the sport from a technical perspective. Also has a great intuition on how to train people, um, how to train a group as well as train individuals. I think that you know he has a lot of conviction in his beliefs and is um, excited about. Wrestling. I mean, if you're with Lou Rizal, if you want to talk, if you want to talk wrestling, he's the guy you want to you want to sit with and have a drink with, have a cold one with, sit on the back porch, talk about every nuance of the sport. He just loves the sport, so I'm excited to talk to him, get his perspective on you know taking over a program that wasn't top five in the country, perhaps needed some cultural shift or change, and uh, kind of go from there. But I mean. Lou and I go way, way back. Yeah, I was going to say, what year did he start coaching you? Because I, so, I, I want to say, what, maybe 06, 07, something like that? Yeah, he started coaching me in 06. He was my – he was the university world team coach in Izmir in 05 when I won the university world championships. And that was the first interaction or experience I'd ever had with Lou. And it was a tremendous experience. He, I think he played a, you know, as much of a role as you can in coaching me for a day at the university world championship. Sure. I, enjoyed his demeanor and approach and so when tom ryan got the job at ohio state i told tom that you know he called me and said he wanted me to stay i said I i'm going to move to the olympic training center to be in a freestyle environment you know no offense to to you tom you seem like a phenomenal guy but i don't think you have the international you know experience to help me accomplish my goals and he said well i'm looking to bring in a coach and uh he goes who are you thinking who, do, who would you want i was like well terry brands or lou roselli and um, no, he, it, wait, wait, so, um, Tommy, I, you're not biased, but why didn't you want a big guy? 
Uh, yeah, it's, I, I think that whole big guy, little guy coach is kind of overrated, honestly. Really? Ben, we, should have, we should have an episode about I, I don't think so. I mean, especially big guys. I, I mean, I guess I can see your point about little guys being able to coach big guys if they get the right mindset. But some of the little guys think that the big guys can wrestle like the little guys, and that's just not true. And then obviously some of the big guys – Think that little guys can wrestle like the big guys. Yeah, it just doesn't work. To your the point. other reason is... Hold on, Lou's the... calling in, so here he is. Okay. How's it going, Lou? Hello. Hey, how's it going? Doing great. Uh, you're on with me and Tommy. Tommy, are you there still? Hey, Lou. We're, I just want to let you know, buddy, we're, we're live here. Good to hear from you. So don't say anything right. crazy right away. Yeah, so don't say anything no, bad about me or make fun of me. We're already live, so... We actually, right. we actually were talking, Lou. Tommy was, he, he was speaking very highly of you, and I, I brought up. He said, he said Tom Ryan asked him, who would you want to be the freestyle coach? And he said, Lou Roselli or Terry Brands. And I said, Tommy, I'm really surprised that that you know you would choose. Uh, you know, both those choices were little guys. Don't you know? Don't you think there's some issue there with little guys coaching big guys or big guys coaching little guys? And Tommy said, no, not at all. And obviously, you coached Tommy and Travell. So, what do you think about that? Well, I don't know what they keep asking who the best big guy coach is. I, I keep telling them it's me. <laughs> no, <laughs> Travell and JD and Tommy and got a, a bunch of them. But Kyle, uh, no, there's dude, uh... it doesn't. Kyle Snyder. I mean, Keith Gavin. So we, we've had our we've had our fair share, but it's all because of them, really. You know, all because well, they they worked hard at their, their skill sets. Hey Lou, just a jump. We didn't even expect to talk to you about this, but do you? Th what do you think of the whole like? You need a big guy coach to make a big guy successful, and you need a little guy coach to make a little guy. What is your what is your overall opinion on? Do you think that that matters? Do you think that there's any merit in that, or do you think it's kind of basically made up and it's not a big deal? Well, I don't know if it's made up. I would just say that I focus more on the on building a relationship with the person that you're coaching more than I would on the size of them. The people that care about what you do and they learn the skill sets and have some trust in there probably makes a little more. Uh, is a little more important than what size, because usually the coach isn't wrestling with the guy. You know, every now and again they do when they're younger, but, you know, as they get older, it's certainly not the case. So yeah, like ben, I, build, I, I, think, I build a relationship more. I think, Ben, to adding to Lou, what Lou's saying is, I, I agree with what you're saying, Ben, in that you need a big guy workout partner, but he doesn't yeah. have to be your coach. You know, I mean, you do need challenged but it doesn't necessarily have to be your actual coach. You yeah, know? I, I guess that the, the the issue where I, I would say that I see it, and obviously Lou's past that. He's, he's proven to be successful. I think some little guys think big guys can wrestle like them, and then some big guys think little guys can wrestle like them and vice versa. And I guess to every athlete, you do got to work to their, their skill set, but um, big guys and little guys, generally speaking, do wrestle differently. I, I would agree with that. There, there's some truth to that. There's... You know, they, they do some different holds and, you know, but if you're a good coach or if you're finding skill sets that they can do and that will work for them and knowing your athlete probably really well give you that idea that these things will work for you. This is because you do these certain things, you know, so, but, but like you said, you got to have a workout partner that, that challenges them. You know, that's the whole deal with these, uh, these RTCs. I mean, you try to get these elite athletes and integrate them with the college guys so they grow a little faster and they have great partners and they're used to wrestling men, you know. Um, yeah. That's kind of the whole idea behind it. So, so Lou, so Lou let, me, let, me, let me open up here, um, Ben, because, you yeah, know, have for, those, for those of our viewers that don't know, Lou and I go way back, way back to 2006. So I don't want it to look manufactured and me pretending to ask questions to Lou that I think I kind of already know the answers to <laughs> because we're, we have such a good relationship. But I will start out, Lou, because we haven't spoken in a couple months. You know, you, you obviously had a great – run at edinburgh and possibly a, a more notable or maybe not notable but just a a more uh, recognized run at ohio state as the head head coach of the rtc the head associate um assistant coach at ohio state and national champions four-time national champions olympians olympic champions world team members you know the list goes on and now you're you're at a school where um there's certainly great potential. We don't even need to go into the resources and possibly the talent you already have on the team. But perhaps there's there wasn't as much of a system in place and you're trying to maybe instill a culture that didn't quite completely exist to your liking at Oklahoma. So 
real quickly jumping in, how is that transition going for you to go from Olympic Olympic team uh, coaching and a national championship team to possibly, you know, down in the trenches a little bit more? Well, Tommy, I think that, you know, right away, you know, you start talking about some of the people we had at Ohio State and, you know, you get guys like Snyder who are pro at what they're doing, you know, and they understand, you know, the work that goes along with it. Um, I, I think here we're, they're learning, you know, the way I'd like to do things. Um, I think it's it's going to it's challenging for them. I think they didn't have the structure in place and the accountability to it. So, but you know, right now I think that they're working hard at what they're doing. But it's just going to take some time to get you know to get that elite status out of them. You know, as you know, philosophically, I'm I'm a guy that believes that two a day, five six days a week is what elite looks like. And so until you can handle that kind of workload. You know, you just have to keep gritting your teeth and getting used to that. You know, and they always do. The good ones always do. The elite guys always figure out that's how that's really important. But um, you know, so but so it's been a little bit of a challenge. You know, getting people on track academically, getting people to believe that the work matters, and you know, it's an effort-based team, and you know, we just have to keep grinding away at it. Hey, Luke, can can you speak on your recruiting classes? I I always forget the rules. I'm not in the NCAA environment anymore. Well. Uh, I can speak a little bit just in the, you know, I probably can go into depth with it now, now that they're all signed the letter of intent. The they they did sign their NLI, right? Yes, they signed their NLIs. And, you know, I always try to be a little bit vague with that because I, I do believe that, you know, it, we, we signed seven top 100s and, you know, we have an eighth guy that we had signed as an Oklahoma kid, a heavyweight. And then I got a verbal from a Tommy Hoskins, you know, that's, you know, obviously verbals don't mean very much until you get, until you get yep. signed. But, uh, you know, the commitments are always nice. You know, especially if, you you know, there's no smoke and mirrors. If they really want to come there and they want to be coached by, you know, this staff. So, but, uh, you know, I don't really think in the recruiting process, I think everybody needs to be worked with. I think everybody needs to learn a way to do things that matter. You know, nobody's really mistake-free and they just, oh, he's good. Yeah. Let's let yeah. him be. Even, even Kyle Snyder, you know, as good as he was, he wasn't, you know, he got a lot better. Yeah. You know, so I just kind of believe that. You know, you just keep got it. You got to keep getting better. You got to keep focusing on that more than who or what. Work on growth and learning and how to get better at something, and and keep working to you. You know, we're just in a, in a sport where you just continually work until. I don't think there's ever a day that goes by that you don't you don't work at it. Yep. And so you um, you actually got a late start on this recruiting class, but I would say that you're I think top three. Tommy was trying to put the Buckeyes over Oklahoma, which. You, you, know, I how, did, you know how Tommy I is. Do that, and Lou knows I'm a pro bug. That's guys. freaking insane, Tommy. Just, just <laughs> enough with you. <laughs> I put well. No, but I you, had Cornell at one. No, and you put Ohio State over Oklahoma. Listen I, to no, last week. I put them in the same group. I put them in the same group. Okay, but anyways, Oklahoma is significantly better. Lou, you got a late start. You still made it happen. Um, what was the key to putting that kind of group together in such a short period of time? I think really just, you know, as most people know, you, you take a job and, and you start, you know, what do we got to do first? Well, you got to put your staff in place. We got to get that secured first. And, and so I think that it's a tribute to the group that I work with. It's really not, you know, it's not a, an I, it's a we thing. And they knew some people, I knew some people, you know, right away we got to work on people that we thought we could get and that could fit in and, you know, really – just trying to increase the, the pedigree here so that we, you know, have some guys that we can work with that can challenge down the road. And, and so, I'd, like I said, it, it's really not just, you know, it wasn't me. It was, you know, Keith Gavin and Michael Leitner, you know, and our new addition with Hunter. You know, he came in, uh, in late, but, you know, we had a lot of people secured already. But, um, you know, it's a tribute to those guys, really, you know, and getting, getting after it. You know, as you know, it's a, again, just like in wrestling, it's no different than coaching. The guys that do better usually work the hardest. Yep, yeah, for <laughs> sure. So, um, Tommy, once you got a question, I, I could ask Lou questions all day. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of weird to ask somebody that you know so well questions. You know, it's like it, it just doesn't feel as real, whereas you, Ben, it's probably, you know. Yeah, I don't think natural. I've ever had to sit down with Lou, ever. Yeah, but, but Lou, nope. I, mean, I guess I guess one thing I want to say, because, you know, you and I speak a lot, but we haven't spoken, I think, since – maybe three or four weeks after the Olympics, but... Tommy, are you, are you just mad because he left Ohio State so you just cut off all lines of communication? I was not mad. I can't <laughs> even believe you. I'm, in fact, very happy for Lou, and the Sooners are my second favorite collegiate wrestler. Ah, <laughs> you're bum. But Lou, Lou, you, uh, you, were able to get, you were able to get Hunter Stever down 
to Norman, which I think is a great move. Um, we know Hunter's history with injuries and, you know, just some unfortunate circumstances. How do you feel about him being, you know, pretty much your first, uh, you know, pupil, so to speak, in your in your new international program that you're starting from scratch? Well, as you know, the Steelers have lots of ability and, you know, he just has to keep learning, learning the system. He's been hurt for a while. You know, he had a good performance out in New York. I think he can improve on that, you know. Um, so it, it, it's a good start. I mean, he really he wants to wrestle and show that he can still compete. And I think, he, you know, he'll do the work. And as you know, you still got to learn some things in the freestyle world, you know, with, with lead management and push outs and not getting turned and how to get a turn. So there's still a lot, to, a lot of growing for him to do. But, you know, he's willing to do the work and, you know, we'll start with him and, in the spring, I'd like to go out and try to get one or two more people that, that care about what they do. And and really, you know, these RTCs, I, I'm looking for someone that's really obsessed with trying to be an Olympian or world team member that has the pedigree, you know, and just needs a coach and, need, you know, and obviously want to help them financially. But I don't want that to be the, the, the forefront of why they're doing something. I want you to be obsessed with something. And then all of a sudden we'll, we'll work out that other part later. You no know, about um, it. I just think that's more more important that way. You can't just do it for the money, as you know you just yeah. can't, if I raise your stipend 250 bucks, are you going to work harder tomorrow? No, and it's going to be the same. It's important to you. <laughs> yeah, so, for sure. But he's a good start for us, and we just have to go out and get a couple more guys to integrate with our team so they understand what elite looks like. Hey, sp- speaking of getting turns on top, and someone you don't currently coach, but you obviously spend a lot of time coaching. Um, man, Logan looked fantastic at the NYC, especially with just the way he was. He was kind of using what he used to use to go to bar arms. Now he transitioned to a nice trap arm game. Um, did you have any part of that transition? And then how do you see him, his chances going into the world championships here? And I don't know, was it a month or a little over that? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, a lot of it, the top and bottom game, you know, uh, after six years of coaching him, you know, you know, I could have told you he was going to be deadly on top he's you know just starting to understand the transition and what comes next and you know from gut wrench to deep waist to deep waist to to trap arm you know so you start understanding what's going to happen next and you're, you're way ahead of the guy in bottom so yeah. I, i'm not surprised on either you know that, that he did what he did and and his chances at the world championship you know i would expect him to you know to make a run for the title and, you know he's someone that's that good he was on track when he was a 60 kilo guy and you know now at 61 it's a little bit heavier for him which is probably better for him but 65, you know, he could wrestle either weight class. He could have made the Olympic team, too. I don't want to say that he couldn't. But, you know, 61 is, you know, he's really strong for that weight class. For him. Yeah, lot, I mean, he was, like I said, he, he was on track at 60 kilos to be the Olympian, you know, if they hadn't changed the weights. So, you know, it's it, it certainly, you know, I would think that he'll be right in the thick of it to win. Nice, nice. Um, the, the next question I had, as I asked a little earlier, is um, Keith Gavin, someone I know pretty well, so now, now you, you've coached him at Ohio State RTC, and now obviously you work with him. Um, I mean, you're his boss, but you work with him. And what, what are the best things that you like about Keith? And um, just, did you have fun working with him at Ohio State at the RTC? Yeah. At the, our Ohio RTC, was just, you know, he was just so consistent. You know, never complained and very logical, very practical person. You know, can, you know thinks. You know, it has a really unique you know, style of wrestling, too. You know, it's a you know a little more foreign like, which you know most people are. And as you know, in domestic wrestling is bang, 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 bang. He's not he's not that guy. He's not the guy that pulls on your head for you know five and a half minutes and then hopes that you know you fall over. He, you know, he's going to try to beat you with skill sets. You know, um, so it was good to work with him at the Ohio RTC, and it's good working with him here. Like I said, he's very he's a bright kid that you know is very sharp and, and thinks. You know, we don't make hasty decisions. Don't get excited. Just hey. Stay the course. So he, he, what's, he's a what's, good pickup what's, for me. What's exciting, and I think is a little bit under the radar with your staff, Lou, is that um, the three you know coaches that are able to be paid by the university, yourself, Michael Leitner, and Keith Gavin, all all three of you competed on world and Olympic teams. And one thing that's interesting, and Ben, maybe you can chime in here, and, and Lou. Maybe you can, but I don't know if another staff in the United States has all three of their official staff members that competed on World Olympic teams. Do you guys know if that's if, oh. if, if Oklahoma's the only one? That's a brain buster right there, Tommy. Well, it, I, 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 yeah, I, I, 
I don't well, know who, the answer. Who's to that. the third on Iowa? Because Tom and Terry obviously did. And then I think Morning Star. Morning Star. Uh, Morning. No. And what about Oklahoma State? Because John and Guerrero did. Esposito, he did not. Yeah, he did. Okay, Oklahoma's got it. You guys. Well, hey, well that. <laughs> hey, Lou, Lou, Lou. Uh, I expect a check in the mail for bringing that to light. Uh, on the podcast, you know, I mean, geez, I didn't even... <laughs> well, I appreciate that Tommy. That's, that's a good plug for us, you yeah, know, but it really does good... help. And, and, um, you know, what, as you know, with the head coach having certain duties that they have to do, it's nice to know that if I'm, if I'm recruiting, if I'm if I have to do something else that I have, you know, Keith Gavin and Mike there that understand freestyle, understand that, you know, the amount of work that I like them to, them to do. I, I feel very confident and trust in what, what they're going to do. If I'm, if I happen to not be there, you know, which, right. As you know, I think practice is sacred. So, but if there's times when I can't be there to run a freestyle program, a freestyle, you know, uh, practice, then yeah. I'm covered. These guys are good. Absolutely. Hey, Lou, real quick. Um, you know, you know, I, it, it's it's almost a waste of oxygen to ask you what your long term goals are at Oklahoma because I think we all know what they are, but. You know what? What are your goals in the next four months with the program? Uh, from the you know just the collegiate guys. What what do you expect? You know what what do you expect from yourself and the staff and the team to be when you're when you're when you're leaving the NCAA's in St. Louis the third weekend in March and you're on the road back to Norman. What what, what would what would satisfy you? And I'm not talking about results. Just may, maybe a little bit of results. Maybe a little bit of cultural. Like what would satisfy you given where you started a couple months ago? Well, I think if you look through the rankings and you look to see where some of our guys are, we have, you know, we have a, a bunch of guys, you know, that are eight to 20 ranges. And, and the first thing I'd say is, you know, I, I just want to see them improve in what they're doing. You know, if, if you're a bubble guy and you're an eight, let's get you on that stand. You know, we have, and you know, you have two or three of those guys that can happen, that can happen for them. now. Are they set in stone? No, we got to do a lot of work from here to there. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that me and my group can bring out the, the best in them, you know, and keep being smarter than the rest of the group so they can, they can keep getting better and so that they have those opportunities, you know. So on, on, my, on the backside of a trip, of, you know, if you knock down and some people say you're crazy, you know, two or three All-Americans or whatever, I, you know, I, I would hope that, you know, like I said, we got a bunch of guys in, the, in that bubble range, you know. And so if they grow a little bit, they get better a little bit, they get tougher, you know, because as you know, in the tough rounds, you got to be a tough guy. And so, you know, I mean, it's not going to just happen just because you, you know, you've, you've done a few things right. You got for some of us, we have to do everything right. You got to sleep right. right. You got to eat right. You got to finish faster. You got to get off bottom. <laughs> There's a multitude of things that are, have to happen. So I'm hoping that you know we can just bring the best out of our our group. And you know, those kids that are special, we got a few seniors that can, you know, end their career, you know, on on a great moment. Awesome. Nice. I, I love it. Um, Lou, we won't keep you any longer. I know you probably got some more top 100 guys to go sign, and Tommy will probably yeah. still put Ohio State over you. Oh, but uh, <laughs> unless you got any closing thoughts, we'll let you go. I don't know if you got any closing thoughts for us. No, I appreciate you guys' time, and um, let me know if you want to do it again sometime. All right, that was a lot of awesome. fun. Thanks a lot. All right, guys. You See bet. You. Take care. See you, bud. Yep, bye. Hey, Tommy, you know what makes me laugh? What's up? Remember that one time when Andy Robat said bye, and then like ten minutes later he was like, "What's yeah. up, guys?" We're like, yeah. "Wait, were you listening the whole time?" Yeah. <laughs> well, it's so it's exciting, uh, man. I mean, lose lose a great friend of mine. I mean, he started out as a a mentor of mine, and you know, kind of ended as a really great friend. Just because when you're training grown men, it kind of becomes that yeah, for Lou, for Lou for his athletes, and so. Really great family friends with him and his wife, Amy, and his kids. And it's just cool to see him, you know, accomplish a goal of being a head coach at a major program. I think in the back of his mind, he always wanted to do that. But I think he's wise enough to not just do that, do it for any opportunity. He, he's had other opportunities in the past. Yeah. And so he's a pretty strategic guy when it comes to making the right moves. And um, I'm excited to see him there. And I think that one thing that Lou's very good at is that he's good at building consensus with the people in the room. And so, you know, the athletes really take well to lose a approach from a day-to-day -day training perspective. And I I've never questioned that. He's, he's as good as anybody in America at building consensus on what the group thinks is best for them from a training perspective. 
Um, and he's very, you know, very predictable. And when you're 19 or 20 years old, Ben, I mean, it's kind of soothing to have some predictability in your life. Oh, because- that that's so Tommy. That is so huge. You know, you know, one walk of life that doesn't have is the MMA community. I mean, they they right. freaking stress me out. And I try to I try to describe to people what what wrestling division one college wrestling is like. You know, the coaching, the consistency, all that stuff, and. MMA people just don't get it because it doesn't exist in MMA. And yep. um, that is a huge thing. I mean, being consistent as a coach, that's one of the most important things. Because, yeah, especially with those 19, 20-year-old kids, you stress them out so bad of one week you're saying this, next week you're saying this, you're contradicting yourself. They don't know what to do. They think they're going to get yelled at no matter what. Yeah, um, That consistency is paramount for uh, Absolutely. getting a program. Absolutely. And that's, that's Lou's, you know, shtick. That's his um... – that's what he's known for. In fact, you know, when you're around him for a decade like I am, sometimes it's like, man, I I know what he's gonna say before he says it. And and you know, after a while you're like, oh geez, this is this is wild. But you know, when you think when, when you think about when you think about at age nineteen or twenty, I mean that's what you want. You want consistency. Yeah. You, you want if you really want to be great, you no, know, you, sure. if you want to party, then you probably don't want it. But you know, <laughs> if you if you want to be great, you know, you want somebody to just tell you what to do and you know it's almost like it's almost like you want to be told how yeah. things got to be and so he provides that you know I think that the one concern was can he can he can he speak in many levels on the recruiting fundraising getting a staff front you know can he can he do the head coach front man type of thing that that head coaches have to do and and um man I mean he got a, a top Top seven, top one hundreds. He's obviously got some fundraising going on. If he's, you know, we didn't even get into it, but he said he wants to get another Olympic athlete or two on top of Hunter Stever. So, you know, it's it's pretty pretty exciting, and they're going to take some lumps this year. You know, just because culturally there's a lot of work that needs to be done. But I can promise you this: it's going to get better every time out for those guys. Nice. Hey, I, I got to come clean with you, Tommy. I, I did use your tagline today in, in one of my videos on my Facebook page. What was it? You can't legislate greatness. I love it's, it. It's a good line. It's a good line. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I used it. I don't know. Hopefully I don't have to pay you for it or nothing. Were yeah. you ready to get into this weekend of wrestling? Because wrestling season is here and there was some good good stuff going on. Yeah, let's talk about... Okay, let's I'm go. Excited. It's, 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 you know, it's, we made it through the off season, Ben, and I think we can officially say that like right around now is when we actually have something to talk about. We don't even have to like, we don't have to uh, like, hey man, what do you want to talk about this week? It's like, hey, yep. what do we have to leave out this week? Yep. You know what I mean? It's more like it. I mean, you sent me the agenda because you're getting all professional on me today. And well, I, uh, I wanted to make, like you said, that you know what? Honestly, it was like I was watching different things this weekend. And so I'd watch something and I was like, wow, that'd be good. And I said, I know if come Tuesday, I know I'm not going to remember all this stuff. So I'm like, so as I watch something and something interested me, I wrote it down so that we could uh, we could bring it up. I'm in, man. I'm hey, in. Let's rock. Did you know that Ohio State, Cleveland State, and uh, Kent State wrestled a tri duel today? Yeah, pretty cool, right? I did not know that. Uh, Ohio State beat Kent State 52 to zero. No, they beat Cleveland State 52. Oh, I'm sorry, Cleveland State 52 zero, and they beat Kent State 36 to 13. Interesting. Very Absolutely. Interesting. Um, yeah. And, and I, you know, we haven't told the listeners, but I, I am considering, and you may also be there uh, for the December eighth Missouri versus Ohio State duel. Well, I should be there, but should. I got some, I got summoned. Well, I thought you still might make it. Yeah, I know, I know, but okay. I should be there regardless, you know. And then I got summoned by uh, an important customer in the fresh produce business that I'm in, and so um, I'm, I'm expecting to be. Walking in the duel from the airport, but I won't get to hang out with you as much as I thought. With me, with me and Toe, because I think we're trying to get on the same flight. Yes, we'll figure it out. Okay. Um, so let's start out with, I thought this was fun. Uh, Rutgers over Princeton. And they did it in the stadium, just like Iowa did last year. They had a fantastic day for it. A lot of people were doubting. A lot of people said, why would they do this? This is going to look stupid. Tommy, they had the second biggest crowd in NCAA wrestling history. Awesome stuff. All the way, right? Just all the way around. Good job, both programs putting their minds together. They brought great visibility to both programs. The state of New Jersey, just good stuff, man. Good for wrestling. 
and really up and down the lineup, they, there was a lot of really good matches. I mean, the duel ended up uh, 19 to 16. And, you know, the, the highlight of the duel was Matt Kolodzik over Anthony Ashnault, who are both, I believe, top five guys who are both from New Jersey. Um, so from, from what I saw of the duel, man, the fans were into it. It was a great crowd, awesome event. And I really hope that more programs try this thing where they're doing the, the, the bowl thing. Um, you know, doing this, doing the dual meet in the stadium. I hope more people try it. I know, and and let's be honest, Ben. Um, did you did, when 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 Rutgers and Princeton decided to do this? I mean, I'm going to be honest because we're giving them credit. Sure. I thought it was going to flop. I figured what have they got to lose? Well, that's a good point, but I thought it was going to flop <laughs> regardless. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean the only thing, the, the one thing they do have going for them. Um, that to me is pretty obvious to me is there's such a huge population density in New Jersey. Um, and with both those programs being Jersey programs and a lot of their wrestlers being Jersey wrestlers, I thought they could capitalize on that. You know, when, when stuff like this doesn't happen very often, and they did get lucky and have a really nice day, but when stuff like this doesn't happen very often, you can really kind of get the community behind you. I mean, I'm sure there's um, between current wrestlers, ex-wrestlers, and family of wrestlers um, in New Jersey, there's hundreds of thousands easy right yeah i mean it's a big yep. wrestling state so they they did have that going for them um so i, I yeah i guess i'm glad i i wouldn't have said it would, if you told me it was gonna be seventeen thousand. um i would have said ah, i i would have guessed eight to ten is kind of what i would have felt like they would have which is still what I, I yeah still Anyways, a good number yeah you know when these two programs are able to pull that off doesn't it doesn't it probably speak to a lot of other programs like we got to do that yeah i would like to see obviously arizona state they don't have bad days so they, they might as well just do all of them outside i haven't talked to tom ryan but I, i'm sure he's got something brewing in that noggin of his uh to pull something what do they out. call that thing you know uh, they call it the horseshoe uh yeah they call it the horseshoe <laughs> Dude, one of the most famous sporting arenas uh, on the why don't they schedule michigan versus ohio state before michigan versus ohio state hey hey you know Maybe it could happen. Maybe it could happen. Well, I mean, that would be the common sense plan, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, so are you, are you telling me it's going to happen? Is that what you're telling me? Uh, we'll <laughs> see. Oh, who? Okay, obviously it's not going to happen this year. Is Michigan playing at Ohio State this year or no for football? They're at Ohio State this year on Saturday. Okay, so it would have to be two years from now. Well, they could do it in Michigan next year. I don't care. Michigan. I don't care. Yeah, sure. Michigan's a little colder, but yeah, whatever. They can make it happen. Uh, so speaking of Ohio State, they had a dual meeting against Arizona State this weekend. Uh, I would say nothing too notable. Uh, I mean, there's two things here. I thought Zahid was going to wrestle Bojo. Bojo um, Bojo did a no-show. Bojo no-show. <laughs> Bojo no-show. Uh, I heard his, his wife's having a kid. I'm, you know, I can't confirm or deny that. that, that that's accurate. I mean, yeah, I didn't really want to bring it up, but since she did, it, it's any day now, so I don't think... Well, that, that's a responsible matter. You know, yeah, I don't think he's, uh, I don't think he's uh, into leaving the state, or maybe his wife's not into him leaving the state until that that whole thing gets done. That's, so That's fine. It's a responsibility you have as a Yep, as a Absolutely. Husband. Um, but the one thing that was notable, and obviously the result of this is not what's notable, but Kyle Snyder beat up on Tanner Hall. And Tanner Hall does hold the win over Kyle Snyder in, in the way past. Oh, God. I mean, you know, he does, right? But Tanner Hall had a good – he beat number five and number six last week. He's a heavyweight. Heavyweights can't score points, Tommy. Oh, God. And so for Kyle go. Snyder to go uh, and put 20 points on the board, I know we shouldn't be impressed by Kyle Snyder, but that impressed me. It did impress me, but I'm not surprised. I think I'm always going to be impressed by Kyle Snyder. So there you have that. Okay, so that that was um, you that was to be expected. Yeah, I would. I probably would have guessed like 13, 13, 15, 16 points, not twenty. Well, he okay. he scored a little bit more than I would have guessed. Yeah, I you know I just thought uh, you know and there, there's Tommy. It is true the heavyweights are harder to score takedowns if the if the Obviously, defensive guy understands how to block, shut down, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and Tanner Hall, is a, he's an intelligent wrestler. He was on a roll. I just thought he might be able to slow him down. I didn't think he was going to win. Nothing crazy like that. But I thought he'd be able to slow him down a little bit. Right. Didn't happen, man. Can't and, stop the Olympic champ. And who does Ohio State have this week? They. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. We just talked about it. 
Yeah, they had Cleveland State and Kenton. And I think the next time they're on the mat is December 8th versus Mizzou. Are they not going to uh, Vegas this year? They are, but that's... No, that, that's before, the week before. Yeah, Vegas. They got Vegas, then Mizzou. Oh. I'm excited about Mizzou. You know what I'm excited about? What? Ironman versus Tomasello. Oh, it's going to be awesome, right? That guy can scrap, man. Wow. Did you, did you watch his match against Virginia Tech? Yeah. He's like a hurricane out there. A hurricane. Just... Just impressive. So he's got some funk, Ben. Where, where did you teach him that? No, well, you know, his, his dad was the guy that got me started. And it, it's his stepdad, but his dad was the guy that got me started on funk all the way back when. Gotcha. You didn't even so know that, huh? So he's DJ Funk Master Ironman. So he's the, the next generation of funk. That's um, great. But M- Mike Ironman, who. He wrestled at Nebraska, was at the OTC for a while. He was at he was at Missouri for a couple of years. But then he started a kids club, and that was where Jaden Cox came through. That's where Jaden Ironman came through. Um, and they have a few guys. I believe there is one or two signed to Mizzou that are going to be in the next coming years. Um, so he's got a nice little club. It's about 10 minutes outside Columbia, Missouri. Um, but, yeah, so Jaden Ironman, and, you know, the Missouri coaches were, were really high on him, so he can he – can Oh, coach. yeah, Coach Smith was, you know – Oh, I, yeah, on the show he talked about Yeah, it. you could you could tell that he didn't really want to endorse him as much as he really felt. At least that was yeah. what my emotional uh, intelligence radar was picking up on. Sure, sure. Um, so let's go to um, – I mean, we just want to talk about – I got a bunch of duels on here, but we can talk about Missouri versus Virginia Tech if you want to do that. That was yep. the biggest duel of the weekend. That was number five versus number six. Um, man, I came away from it depressed, Tommy. And I shouldn't be because Missouri won. But they were kicking so much ass. They were doing so well. And then it was like boom, bang, pow. You know, it was uh, Wisman, who's a freshman, was up 3 nothing on, on the number two guy in the country. Gets caught in a scramble and pinned. Miklas goes out, almost gets the first takedown. Hurt, hurt, hurts his knee, injury defaults. And I don't know how, you know, I don't know if he's going to be out for a week or a month or I, I don't know. And then, um, you know, you feel like the duel is still secure because Jaden Cox is there. But, uh, man, Jaden only wins 2 nothing. And this is where, like, I hate it when wrestling math doesn't pour, doesn't work out right, Tommy. Hey, hey Ben, not what? to revisit episode 49, but if, <laughs> if you score zero points, that's a problem. Who scored zero? The other guy. Oh, the other guy. But he still only went two nothing. That's uh, dude. Yeah, but zero points is zero points. That's dominant. I don't yeah, care what anybody's saying. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. He didn't get a takedown. I mean, you know what? And he says he wants to win the hey, Hodge. What about he all, he wants to win the what, Hodge. What all the folk style honks tell me that it, wrestling's about control. You know, sure. it's about control. <laughs> but what about a take? He's got to get a takedown. Zero points is a pretty controlling victory. All right, fair enough. But. Here's my here's my here's the thing that it bothers me, Tommy, because it doesn't work out in my head. Now I, I like things working out in my head logically. I mean, Jason Knoll can't freaking make a junior world team, right? He freaking just murders everyone, which we're probably gonna talk about later. I mean, just beats the crap, just does whatever he wants, makes up new moves, does it all. And Different animal, man. Jaden goes out and wins an Olympic bronze medal, which is something you or I never did, and we were pretty damn good at what we did. And then he only wins two nothing, and it's like, well, yeah, but here, I might be able to come out of retirement and beat that freaking guy, Virginia Tech, two nothing. Yeah, and I but couldn't freaking here, here's, here's the here's the thing. Here's here's the crux of the matter, though, Ben. What? It the move we're going to talk about that Jason Nolf hits, which is some uh, Matrix style from the Never Neverland Warriors Granby roll ninja move that he did in freestyle. He's getting taken down for four <laughs> by somebody that I don't even know. <laughs> oh, man. Is that uh, fair? He wouldn't have tried a ninja roll if he was in freestyle. Yeah, he would have. I, I to- get your point. The styles don't translate very well. Right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, but I still think Jason Nell is going to be good at freestyle. And then, but, um, in due time. But, yeah, but just not the way Jaden Cox is at age but How 21. come Jaden Cox can't just go and pin all these dudes? This is what he just go. You, you know, know, I bet Lee Kemp was the same way. I've heard. Yeah, that Lee I heard Kemp that too. You're like right. that, and um. Yeah, you're right. I heard that. Like no one could beat Lee Kemp, but he couldn't beat anyone by more than three points. Right. Yeah. Um. Wait, so let me let me go through this Mizzou duel because obviously that, these these are my boys. Uh, 
you boys. Fantastic. I mean, you know, Barlow was out at 125, so there's a back backup uh, Aaron Assad in there. And he only loses to Joey Dance 7-4. I mean, and this is the one thing that Brian Smith does better name when he provides depth. Uh, Iron Man goes out there and smashes. And then Ma- Matt Manley wasn't in the lineup at 141. And Sinan, who's a, a backup at that weight, goes in and beats former ACC champ Dennis Gustafson. Um, 49, LeVon Mays looked good, beat up on the number 7 guy. LaValle looked fantastic at, at 57. And then Lewis smashed at 65. So we're going into 174, 20 to 3. I'm like ready to have a party at my mom's house because I was watching it over there. <laughs> and, and Did then, you ask her for the meatloaf? <laughs> Mom, the meatloaf. <laughs> she makes a mean meatloaf. Oh, that's um, great. So hopefully Nicholas's knee is not too bad. Um, yeah. And hopefully the you know the rest of the guys can shake it off and come on back because they got Ohio State. I don't think Mizzou has a duel before Ohio State. I could be wrong there, but I I don't know. It's gonna um, be a great duel. That there, there's I mean we can't we can't should. start talking about it soon enough. Wait, are you sure? So let's go twenty five. Um, Rodriguez versus Barlow. I think you got to give Barlow the, the the advantage. Correct. Uh, it will be. I mean, but Rodriguez is wrestling well. Yes, but yes, I, I I agree. Tomasello Ironman. You give Tomasello the the nod, but that's gonna be as, a fun one as well. But it, it's kind of like Rodriguez and and uh, Barlow is kind of like uh, yeah. Tomasello and Ironman. Yeah, you know what I mean? Um, and then you got uh, Keyshawn versus Manley. I think you got to give Manley the advantage there. I um, thought. Go ahead. Oh no 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 no! Okay, I think Manley's Manley, gonna be back. Yes. I don't think it was. Yes, a, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, and then you got Micah versus Levon, which uh, that's a tough one. But you got to give Levon his third. Slight edge. Country. Slight edge. Levon on paper. Yep. You got to give it to Levon. Lavalley versus uh, Jake Ryan. Jake Ryan took a loss today. So he's I'm, not wrestling well. Oh, he's having a rough go. So you give. Give him the. I, I I got I got I got um. Wow, we're gonna win this duel. I never did this before, Tommy. I got Mizzou at five two, possibly four three. I could take okay. Keyshawn over Manley. Oh come on, he just Keyshawn just lost to somebody. Who do you lose to? I'm looking it up. Um, okay, seventy four. You're going Bojo over Westman, obviously, yep. right? Eighty four. Um, Miles and Miklas. If Miklas is back, obviously. Even if you got Miklas, I'm taking Miles. Okay, but that you know Miklas is a two time All American, so it's not like you're talking right. pushover or anything here. Um, so that's oh, um, Keyshawn lost at Journeyman. He got beat up by um, Kevin Jack. That Kevin Jack's pretty good. Um, Ninety seven though, you got to take Jaden over um, more, and that that makes it six four. And then obviously you got Kyle Snyder. Anyway, yeah. So so I think the matches that. Well, really, those first four are all first five are, are should be really well, who's your six to five? Daniel Lewis. He's bonuses. Is he going to be in by then? He just wrestled yesterday. He's getting six. Okay. Hey, is, is, Tom, is Thomas Sell going to go to 25? No, you're the one that's saying that it doesn't matter if you go up or not. So. Well, it doesn't, but the issue here is from a team matter. Luke Pletch is pretty damn good, Tommy. Dude, stud, I was in there working He's out this morning. He's pretty good. I was in there working out this morning. I'm getting ready for Medlands Were 2017. Were you working out with um, Kyle Snyder? I'm getting ready for Midlands 2017. Where are you working out with Kyle Snyder? No, not yet. Not yet. I'm going to work my way up to the Olympic champion. Uh, <laughs> but at any rate, Pletcher and Tomasello were working out uh, 7 a.m. And uh, Delagnev was putting them through. It was a sight to see. You know, as an upper weight coach, coaching the lightweight, something that you think is not possible. I, I did not say not possible. You're putting words in my mouth now. <laughs> All right. Let's keep going on these dual meets because we had a good one. Let's continue with Virginia Tech. Um, they beat up on UNI. There were some really good matches there. Uh, the match of the week, you know, I was with the dance over Peters early. Um, and Virginia Tech that was wasn't a to, surprise to me, though. It was not a surprise. But I think all. Peters was ranked slightly higher. Than Second. Virginia Tech higher. And, and Dance was third, correct? Yeah. But Dance kind of handled him. Just didn't surprise me. Yeah. Even the way that he won didn't surprise me. Yeah. Okay, but Epperly, Epperly versus Lujan. That was a fantastic match, right? Yeah, and then I saw – I watched the whole match, but I watched the boot scoot that Lou John hit. Uh, it's in, Lu, Lu Han. Lu Han, Lou John, sorry. <laughs> Lu John. Uh, That's Sean well, Jones. I mean, this time last year I was calling him Jaden, and then he earned the right for me to call him whatever the heck he wants to be called. So, you know, Lu, Lu Han is going to have to 
do the same thing. Hey, you want to hear my Taylor Luhan story? Let me hear it. Well, I got I got this um, I got this thing like if I said if I say I'm gonna do a camp, I'm gonna do a freaking camp. I've never canceled in my life, Tommy. I love that about you. And it, in 2000, I want to say it, it was 2010 or 11, and. My buddy in, in Massachusetts, this guy's still my friend. I, I still need to punch him for this. But he says, hey, I'm in Massachusetts. I got this place. Let's do this, blah, 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 blah. I say, okay, I set the camp up. The kids are registering. And like a week before, he says, hey, you can't get the building anymore. Camp's off. And I'm thinking, you idiot. I have all these people registered online. What am right. I going to do here, you know? So I say, hey, everyone can their money back. And Luhan... And, and he had one friend, a kid named Rhett Hembry. They messaged me and said, hey, we've been, we've already bought tickets to come from Georgia. We've already bought tickets to come from Georgia to Boston where the camp is. And, you know, we can't get our money back. And so I say, okay, I was going to be in New York anyways, but my brother would live with the real Buddha family um, who goes to Cornell now. I said, listen, I'll come pick him up and we're going to do a camp. And uh, so I go, Max, I need two, two other eighth graders. And so I find Max, I found two. And there was Luhan. Club. So it's Luhan and Emery. Um, and, and then the, the other kid was Anthony Falbo, who's actually going to Purdue now. So it turns out these kids are pretty good. Um, but yeah, the kid, they, you know, and one of the things that gave it away right away that I, I knew he was going to be pretty damn good because he was the only eighth grader. But uh, high level of maturity. That always, that's a very good predictor to me. Is how mature you know they are, and this kid was just really mature, really intelligent. I do think it's a good predictor. I agree with that. And so, uh, so we had a good week, and then the next, the following year, he came out to Wisconsin to our Funky Fresh camp, and uh, I, I, you know, I've been lucky enough to have some really good kids, and I think there's a bunch of these upper weights are just going to be um, coming. You know, Luhan is one, Ben Darmstadt at Cornell is another, Nick Renan is another, and then Kevin Parker who's at Princeton. I think these kids are going to be. Um, and I've kind of watched them all since they were young and, and all four, you know, across the board, very mature, very intelligent. And I just think these guys are going to, I mean, they're going to battle for some national titles come up here in the next few years. So been lucky enough to be able to see some of these guys young and it's a lot of fun now watching them grow up. Absolutely. But the match was awesome. You know, the thing that Luhan does, and I haven't talked to him in a few years, um, but if I was to give him advice, and it was just his scrambles just aren't quite tight enough and refined enough, and he was making mistakes. And Epperly was, Epperly was very composed, very wise, and um, and just kind of took advantage of the, the mistakes that Luhan did make. And so you know I know I did that as a freshman and sophomore. And so that's just if Luhan just tightens those scrambles up a little more, he wrestles with such a high high pace. He can wrestle top bottom to neutral. Um, he's gonna be very, pretty explosive. Very good. It, pretty explosive. Yep, one hundred percent. So that that was a fun match. Um, yeah, Virginia Tech's looking pretty good. The Missouri made him look eh, not as quite as good as they looked on Friday night. Right, right. All right. What else we got on this list? We're just knocking things off the list. Boom, bam, pow. Back it out. All right. Mid, did, did, you just said you didn't watch this, Tommy. I wish you would. Minnesota over SDSU, eighteen to seventeen. Not. And so and SDSU is having a good year. Chris Bono and staff is doing a great job. They beat Iowa State already. They're trying to they're trying to beat Minnesota, and they're up seventeen to three. Okay, right. so they go to heavyweight. They're still up seventeen to twelve. So all their heavyweight has to do is not get pinned, and they win the match. Well, Tommy, this guy, he got DQ'd with four seconds left, and a lot of people were crying foul. You can't DQ someone with four seconds left, right? And so I say, ah, maybe there's some home cooking. I got to watch this thing. Tommy, this was embarrassing. I might have stalled the son of a gun out in the first period. Really? Literally, Tommy, literally. I'm not, I'm not embellishing. I'm not being figurative. I am being very literal. His belly, chest, and hips were on the mat for over two minutes of the first period. <laughs> okay. Now, even worse than that, even worse. At no point during that two minutes did Minnesota's heavyweight have a bar arm, an arm on the back, a Turk, or a leg in. <laughs> right? That's like definition stalling. Oh, yeah. I mean, so I just don't, I don't know how, I really don't know how he didn't get called more earlier. I mean, definition stalling, when you don't get off your belly 
and the guy doesn't i mean i can understand it kind of if they got like a bar in or they got your arm on your back or something like that you can kind of get it you know right but when the top guy has no hold and you refuse to get off your belly you i'd be calling stalling every 15 seconds i'd be the rest of that. <laughs> stalling hey son of a bitch you gotta get off your belly you know that right dummy i love it and then he wouldn't move and i'd be like all right stalling again he would have been done in the first period if i was repping crazy man i mean do you so who do they have next Who's SDSU? I, I think SDSU wrestles Iowa, actually. Because a lot of people are talking about this. Uh, Seth Gross has looked really good, and he's going to have Corey Clark. Um, so that, that should be a really fun that one. That will be fun. That'll I think that's fun. coming up within uh, within a week. Hold on, I can Google it real quick. So, uh, Chris Bono, getting it done. Yeah, he's the man. Okay, boom, South Dakota State Wrestling. Here we go, clicking on their website. Schedule and results. All right. They got Iowa, 12-2. That's um, got about two weeks. At home. They got Iowa at home. That'll be a fun one for them. Oh, yeah. Nice. Uh, okay, next up on the list. Uh, this is not a positive one, Tommy. Nebraska over West Virginia, 42-6. to uh, Man, it's Henson's third year. They took that tough loss to Campbell. They get crushed by Nebraska. You think he's on the hot seat or no? Who's this? Sorry. <laughs> a guy named Sammy Henson. Oh, uh, no, he's not. Come on, why not? They lost to Campbell. Is it year two or year three? Three. Nah, nah I think I think you gotta wait. I think you gotta wait till they got their whole program. Every guy on the team was recruited by them before you really make an assessment. Unless it's just Unless there's something else going on. Yeah, I mean you you've got you've got you've gotta let the guy have every person on the team he recruited now in the revenue sport deal it's a little bit more cutthroat we're talking about profit and loss you know but but to me i think in the wrestling world you know you, you've got to give a coach a runway that allows him to one he can, he can he can instill a culture pretty quickly but to get the pedigree and the talent and the the people that actually think the way he thinks upon arrival you got to give that guy that 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 time before you really start having those critical conversations. Or maybe you're having them leading up to that time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I think you got to see the guy's whole team that he recruited before you really make a judgment. Sure. Fair enough. Um, the end of Nebraska really, they really put it on him there. Um, and Nebraska, you know, Nebraska is a, and then, you know, I, I talk about Brian Smith doing a great job. You know, just everyone's good on his team. That's something Mark Manning does pretty well. Um, he never has huge holes, you know, and when you look down their lineup, he doesn't have like the stars. Their highest ranked guy is, is Dudley, but, um, 74 is ranked, 84 is ranked, 97 is ranked, heavyweight's ranked, 25 is ranked, 33 is ranked, 41 is ranked, 57 is ranked. So, you know, they're ranked at almost every single weight across the board. Yeah. It's impressive, man. Okay. Let's go, um... Let's go Penn State. What are you laughing at? <laughs> I thought you were going to give me more on that one. <laughs> I thought you were going to give me something positive about Mark Manning. <laughs> I mean, he, he gave me nothing. Yeah, he smoked it out. I mean. <laughs> 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 you sandbagger. Uh, okay, Penn. did you watch how bad Penn State beat everyone's ass at Keystone Classic? Yeah, it was it was unbelievable. And then what was how bizarre. How are they so good at bonus points? What was bizarre is in the same weekend, Mark Hall lost to some guy I never heard of. That that's that's wrestling math not working out. That's freaking stressing me out there. <laughs> the, guy, the guy's not even ranked. How does yeah. that happen? What do you? I mean, this is this is the freestyle folk style conundrum. I I mean, I think Mark Hall's gonna get over. He's gonna be fine. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I mean, the, the one thing I was thinking about Mark Hall is he's not overly offensive, um, and in freestyle, and that's kind of, you know kind of Jaden Cox too, honestly. Um, freestyle, that's something that doesn't really hurt you, but in folk style, that is something that, you know, people can, get, can keep it close and maybe get one turn or ride you out or something something to that effect that, that you know, it can take issue. Yeah, it, you know, I think that Hall wrestles in a way that is, like, he's off, he's he's very counter-offensive. Yeah. Um, and he's great at it. He's so good at it that you know, it's it doesn't look defensive at all, but he's 
somewhat counter offensive and so and folks you know he's going to be fine it's a freshman deal yeah i mean you know, the, the guy wasn't even ranked top 20 you know one, one thing one thing that you know it doesn't matter how good your high school career was one thing that's kind of unique when you get to college and i would imagine even these super charged pedigree type kids like the logan stevers and spencer lees of the world and mark halls of the world would say the same thing but it's it you got to get used to the fact that there is like people you've never heard of that you might beat like nine to five. Oh yeah, that was, and, that was and, huge and, for me. Yeah, and in high school, it's like you beat if you're a blue chip recruit and you beat someone nine to five, you know exactly who that dude is. Yeah, I mean and, that for me, I struggled with that a lot because I wrestled a high pace and you know used my conditioning as a weapon. But you know when I was in these open tournaments, I was wrestling five, six, seven matches. Um, I would wear myself out uh, because, like you said, um, you know, when you're in high school, you're used to the first three matches are one-minute pins, right? Yeah. Or you're playing around with me at uh, I mean, My last years of high school, even though I didn't know it at the time, but, I mean, I had, like, two or three matches per year to, to be excited about. Yeah, yeah. You don't know it when you're going through it. You feel like, you know what I mean? But, like, it's, it's like, man, I mean, you, you didn't have to be on your game but more than two or three times a year. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so Penn State won eight weights, and like I said, they scored a, a ridiculous amount of bonus points. Um, and Nolf is and, like a and, freaking and human ninja, highlight and, reel. And ninja points. I watched. I, no, I, I watched the, the the move, Tommy, and then I was I was working out last night with a uh, pretty good kid. He's Division two national champ, and we were, we were kind of playing around with what Nolf was doing. And I think it's a move. Now, you know, maybe he'll prove me wrong. I think it's kind of a novelty move. I think it's something that... If well, like people, a clinic move that's just... Well, here's the thing. is If you don't expect it to come, it's going to catch you off guard. But it's one of those things where... It, it's going to be not every dumb wrestler is going to feel this, but a really highly intelligent wrestler is going to feel that that moment when they're rolling. And if you let go while he's rolling... The guy who had the double leg will end up in a fairly good position, and the guy who was rolling will end up in a kind of compromising position. So it's I kinda like, it's kinda like in, and it's kind of like in most spladels, all you have to do is let go of the leg, and you won't get spladled. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So it's one of those. So I'm curious, uh, but then he had that other awesome. It was kind of like an, a jujitsu armbar type move that was fantastic. to me. That was actually kind of cooler. Well, they were both amazing. I don't yeah. want to take. They were both incredible, but the thing on top is like wow. Yeah, that was jujitsu, but legal. It was yeah. legal well, jujitsu. He, he didn't actually try to extend the arm, right? He just uh, right. he kind of got into a jujitsu type of position, and then um, and then used it to his advantage. Uh, and yeah. the, the ref was too dumb to count any back points. He was trying to figure you know, when out what was going on. When you watch his highlights, though, even the scores that he had, didn't it just seem that like he looked so excited to be out there? Like, oh, he loves it. He's in the zone right now. I mean, it was just – that's what I love about watching this guy. And, you know, I got to give some credit to Penn State Wrestling. I think that, by and large, the team wrestles this way. They are so freaking excited to be out there. Yeah, I mean, honestly, and it, it was – I mean, when I watched them, Tommy, I kind of get flashbacks to my junior, senior year. And they're they're like a, a dog who's got blood on its taste, you know? Yep. They're like yep. – they know that – you know, for me, it was like, I'm going to go out there and wrestle hard and – for me, it was, I know how to pin these dudes. Like, if I get enough situations, I'm going to get one of my pinning combinations, period. And if I don't get that, I'm going to wrestle so hard that I'm going to make this son of a bitch miserable that he doesn't want to be out there and he's going to give me one of the pinning combinations. Right, um, right. And that's what, the, when I watch Nolf and Rutherford, specifically those two, that's what they look like. They're out there for blood. They want to murder yeah, someone. Nolf is uh, the, the, the human highlight reel so far, year to date, for sure. Yeah, so Rutherford had five pins. Nolf had three pins and two tech falls. Yeah, Rutherford's more of like a grinding dominance, and don't get me wrong, it's very yeah. impressive. Yeah. But like Nolf is like highlight reel. Human highlight reel. All right, hey, we're running low on time here. Can I tell you about two two things, I uh, the two positions specifically that are fresh me in college wrestling right now? Let's do it. Okay. Let me guess. Uh, you don't. You don't like riding time. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll, riding time's cool. Oh God, it's miserable. I love it when college programs this happen at Mizzou. When when the fans are so educated and Mizzou Mizzou's getting there. They weren't there ten years ago. In Jesse Auditorium, when I can't remember who it was, someone went over a minute riding time, and the crowd went freaking nuts. <laughs> it was so awesome. It's 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 such a 
it's such a lame point. Oh, it, it's, it. it's you're just salty. You can't ride anyone. It, it doesn't promote action. No, oh, Tom, you're whining. Um, it doesn't promote action. Whining Please ass. explain to me how it does. Okay. Anyways, can we get on to what I don't like? All right. All right. Let's go. Okay. There's this one position, and I so I'm gonna try to talk our audience through it. The top guy. So now you don't now right. If anything's in bounds, if anything's in bounds, then. Um, they're in, right? Right. Well, if we're in, if we're in top bottom referee's position, and the bottom guy's all the way out of bounds, right? But the top guy extends his foot so his foot is in bounds, and he just sits there. Okay. Now here's the conundrum, Tommy. If the bottom guy even starts to do anything moderately good, the top guy just pulls his foot out of bounds and then out of bounds, right? Right. And if the bottom guy dives out of bounds to get the other guy's foot out of bounds, so he actually gets a fresh start. He stole it. So it's annoying because the bottom guy's got to like kind of sit there and like kind of crawl a little bit and act like he's doing something. But essentially the top guy's just getting free riding time without doing anything. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, but, but what's it's your... so ridiculous. What's your solution? Hell, I don't know. Just I mean, maybe <laughs> sta stalemate it. You could call it a stalemate, right? I think if you see deliberate... You know, avoidance of a, of an action from the bottom man, then you you hit him for fleeing or stalling. But that was, what else can he do there, Tommy? Because if he does anything else good, the top guy just pulls his foot out of bounds and they're out. So what's um, the point? Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. So, I don't know. You got to come up with a solution. I, I think that. I mean, I think the refs just have to be cognizant of the situation and call it a stalemate because I've seen a few times where the ref will let it go on for like 15 seconds, and it's like, you know, the bottom guy's trying to like stand up, but he knows he, he it's a waste of his time to try that hard because if he try I mean does something good the guy's going to pull his foot out of bounds. I mean it's a really like bizarre situation. So I think the fix there would be the refs be intelligent and just call it a stalemate or something to that uh that sort. Let's do it. What's your number 2? Number 2 is the position that William Miklas got hurt in and it was actually the position that um uh Matt Manley got hurt in last year from Missouri. And the position is where the bottom guy goes for a leg pass, but he goes for a leg pass where the top guy's legs, um, one of them is in between his two legs. And actually, the funny thing about it, I hate this position, but I got back points on this position in both my NCAA final matches that I won, Tommy. Um, but this position is also called the 50-50 position in jiu-jitsu, and it's where people go for a lot of leg locks, knee bars, and that kind of stuff. But there's so many injuries that happen out of this position. Okay. I mean, it's astronomical. So, um, and like I said, you know, just had Willie was getting the takedown. The bottom guy went for the leg pass. Um, they ended up tangled up, and Willie popped his knee on the side. And, you know, lots of times it's not a major injury, but it's a Tommy, it's just such a dangerous situation. So, I'll tell you, I'll tell you another position that bothers me is uh, uh, a lifted single leg where the guy has. Um, his he's standing on the outside of the single instead of the inside and he's got the ankle in the armpit yeah and he rotates the, the the man who's attacking the leg and has the lifted single he rotates his shoulder down against the knee it's too hard to explain oh i love that just fall I, over no i'm not talking about collapsing the knee down the way it's supposed to go so the guy falls on both hands i'm yeah, talking he about puts pressure down against the knee joint yeah, that's wrong. Well, the, the the bottom guy can just fall over. Yeah. I don't see that's the point of wrestling, right? Making people do things against their will. Yeah, but it's such a fast motion that I don't nah, even know. Nah, you never seen anyone pop their ACL there. Are you kidding me? Damian oh. Hahn did it to Pat DeGain. Um, he, he did like three did, guys. Did he pop his ACL? Oh, yeah. What? He, he popped it. Come on. Yeah, let's have Damien on the show. He'll talk about it. <laughs> Damien, do you break guys' ACLs with this move? Maybe, yes, I mean, does. the way I'm picturing it, I've never seen anyone get injured. Ask so, Damien. Maybe, we got to bring Damien on the show. Maybe you're he was in Minnesota, he did it to like four dudes in one season. And broke their ACLs? And I think like one ankle and two ACLs. Oh, I know Pat. On. Yeah. I must not be picturing what you're talking about correctly because what I'm picturing. I got to go up to Wisconsin and do okay. it. Okay. So know we're, we're talking, he's picture. got uh, ankle in the armpit and and the, the, on the, the leg that is lifted, he puts pressure onto that knee. So yeah, so he's he's got the ankle in the armpit. Sure. And, and most guys, when you have the ankle in the armpit, you're on the 
you're on the inside of the ankle, meaning that you you're oh, on really? the same I, side. I would prefer to be on the outside. Well, the outside is the the freaking illegal move. It's against the joint. No, you want to be on the out. I mean, if, okay, okay. So you grab a, a high single and you pick it up. You're talking about. Um, you're not towards their crotch. You're on the outside of their leg. Or you're on their yes, or into yes, their yes. You're on the outside leg. You're on that's the op- where you want to be. You're on. The, yeah, I know that. But oh, okay. you, you shouldn't have to. I go didn't know that one. you knew the semantics of single leg finishing. I I know a few things about <laughs> the single leg. Um, <laughs> at any rate, going against that knee on the outside is wrong. You're it talking about pushing it down. I'm talking about just jamming your shoulder. Like basically, it's like this. It's like you're pretending you're uh, chopping wood. Yeah, but you don't. But you don't have arms. Yeah, and, and that's why I never see anyone get hurt there. Oh, dude! Maybe Damien Hahn had just wrestling. a. a, a <laughs> maybe Damien Hahn had this like specialty ninja shoulder chop where he could hurt people. But no, I've, I've seen it happen to a lot of guys. I've you never should, seen anyone be injured there. All right, I'm gonna find it on video. I, da- I'm gonna call Damien. Damien, you better not be breaking people's ankles. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but this is 50-50 position. It's dangerous, man. And the ref's got to be a little more educated and be quicker to stop it because I see a lot of injuries in there. And it's just, it just not a good situation. Um, and so I think refs just need to be aware of what, exactly what it is and exactly how people can be hurt because um, it's a problem right now. Got it. That's all I got, Tommy. You got anything else? We went hard tonight. It was that a good was episode. Fun. I mean, it's wrestling season. Episode 50, we're still going strong, and our wives don't listen. The, and this week's kind of weak, though, because it is Thanksgiving weekend, so there's not as much wrestling. Uh, but obviously, in two weekends, we got the Vegas invite, so that'll be a lot of fun. Absolutely. Maybe we'll have a guest on next week. So uh, Another one? I'm in. I don't know, because I, I, like I said, I don't think that there's that much stuff going on this weekend. I could be wrong. Is there a schedule somewhere? Of all college matches, there's got to be a schedule somewhere. Hmm. Let me let me give me one second here. I'm uh I'm trying to look somewhere. I think that there might be a schedule. Um, search. Okay, hold on. I could go. What's this? Eleven twenty-two two zero one six through eleven twenty-nine two zero one six. All right. Let's see what else we got. Michigan State at Bloom at Lock Haven. Oh, ooh, Oklahoma State at Minnesota. That's a good one. Um, Iowa at Purdue will have a couple good matches. Who else we got here? Ohio State. Oh, that already happened. Ohio State at Cleveland State. Yeah, not that much wrestling this weekend, Tommy. So maybe we'll talk about Mich- Minnesota, Oklahoma State. Oh, gra- uh-huh. Grapple at the Garden. Who's there? Or Grapple in the Garden? Grapple at the Garden? Plenty of guys. Let's see. We got... We got Cornell, Hofstra. Wow, no, it's almost all smaller New York teams. It's not nearly as big as it has been in the past. Wow. Interesting. 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 All right, Mr. Tommy. All right, brother. You have a fantastic night. Tell your wife, listen, just one, just pick one. Just one. That's just all one we're track. asking for. That's all we're asking. And I'll harass my wife as well. All right, sounds good, man. All right, good night, buddy. See you, bye. You are listening to the T-Row and Funky Show brought to you by Defense Soap. Defend what you have built.